26th day of October 20, it's 23, I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durmfurt, also known as the nuclearproctologist.org. we got a full show again tonight for Thursday's show, and make sure I turn off the music. I actually left uh, <laughs> music playing yesterday, it happened to be a long song, I think it was 11 minutes. Uh, have I ever done that before? After In a decade? I don't think I've ever done that, an entire decade. I sh- should I be ashamed of myself for not screwing up for a decade? Actually, it's more than a decade. <clears throat> Yeah, let's toast Shinzo Abe. Thank God you're in hell. They should have buried him in one of them one-ton bags. They got 30 million of them. They can spare one for Shinzo. A disgusting parasite. Um, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. What's wrong with you guys? Watch the 36 number go from 36 and roll back to zero. Let's do that again. 36, refreshing the page, and boom, I got zero thumbs up. <laughs> that was the day. I fell asleep and uh, never turned the pole off last night till late. And uh, did the International Atomic Energy Agency, South Korea, Taiwan, China, and Japan conspire to hide the massive Fukushima radioactive fallout? That was the poll last night. And I got no idea what the poll is tonight, but subscribe, <laughs> like, and check, blah, 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 do all that fun stuff. If you're interested in reality, you won't regret it. Last night we were talking about, this was a, a study on how you can shield yourself from radiation in the nuclear wasteland rather than getting out of the nuclear wasteland. And they collect the soil from the site where rainwater collects, had a radiation dose rate of 30 microsieverts, the upper limit of the measuring instrument. You can only measure 30 microsieverts. What the hell are you doing with an instrument like that? In a nuclear wasteland, for goodness sakes. Why not get a real instrument? <coughs> um, and a count rate of 22,200 counts per minute, which meant that... A microsieber is equal to about 740 counts per minute. 740 atoms pulsing energy at the speed of light every second, or every minute. Japan's Prime Minister Kushida plans an income tax cut for households and corporate tax breaks. Well, actually, I'll come back to that story. That wasn't what I wanted to start off with. There was a study from... Uh, October the 16th of this year, I believe. Right there. Oh, I had used it for an example and a story just before that. Lessons, and I got to check everything to make sure my volume is actually on, the music is actually off. Lessons learned on the impact of unprecedented soil, unprecedented now that's a word reserved for extraordinary events, right? You never would know it with the study that they got there. But yet they call it an unprecedented soil decontamination program. Where they picked up between 30 to 60 million one-ton bags of radioactive fallout by scraping the top inch, 1.1 inch of topsoil. How do you scrape 1.1 inch? Have you ever tried to scrape? Go out with a rake and try to scrape up 1.1 inch of topsoil. See how that works? Um, sorry, just getting ahead of myself here. Yeah, the 16th of October, so <clears throat> 10 days ago. We used a, compi- uh, a combined experimental model approach to study soil erosion, sediment, and cesium-137, our old enemy number one, because it's a propaganda tool. The biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods is the curium isotopes, and curium isotopes need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium, and plutonium probably need 20 times thicker than you do for cesium-137. So it's very dishonest to suggest cesium 
is the dominant isotope. The model demonstrates that uh, decontamination program is effective in the treated area. <laughs> Wait till you get the load of what they've done here. Though 60% of the initial radio cesium remains in forested landscapes, so 67%, 70% of it, they couldn't pick up. That's what they're saying. Well, the reality of it is, it's just a little area, and they can only pick, they can only scrape up 33% uh, of the topsoil. That's what they're basically trying to employ. But we're talking about the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society. The immigrants don't speak the language. You know, the, the, the people the nuclear industry hate in particular. Don't worry, they hate you too. The persistence of 137 cesium. So why are you talking about cesium, though? Uh, everywhere we go, we see this over and over as if that's the only isotope. Oh, how come there's no uranium in this equation, which you can't have any other isotope without the uranium? And a lot of the, the second most dominant fuel in the pellets is plutonium. The persistence of CCM-137 in force remains an obstacle to the return of the local inhabitants. And the result, resumption of the economic activities associated with forest exploitation Economic activities associated, well, you just said 67% of the land is the forest is too radioactive and you can't be decontaminated. But the reality of it is, when the majority of everything is contaminated and you try to clean up a little section, <coughs> it's going to be recontaminated immediately. The persistence of 137 cesium in the forest remains an obstacle to the return of the local inhabitants. <coughs> no. The fuel particulates itself, right? <sighs> they don't make it easy on me, do they? So why don't they show you a picture like this, which is the stump of reactor four. They should have been razzed to the ground. Why don't they show you that when you make those particular assertions? Because you're going to say, well, the reactor core and the fuel pools, which got decades of reactor cores. So what's worse, the reactor core or 10 reactor cores in the fuel pools? Well, 10 reactor cores in the fuel pools are at least 10 times worse, but they're probably even more so because they've already gone through, the they're, they're went through the fuel cycle. And what that means is once it gets through the fuel cycle, 18 months or so, is it's full of microscopic cracks. And so it's hemorrhaging radiation, still splitting the atom. This is what makes it dangerous. They say, well, you got no solution for long-term storage, but they forget to add on, it's still splitting the atoms and there's no containment. How they ever got to this stage is insane. And they've done it under the secrecy acts in the 40s and 50s, right? And everything goes, there's nothing. But then they should have come to their senses, but it became, they were so secretive, they took over most of the dominant functions of your governments. And they've still got a throttle uh, hole of it today. And so th the fuel pools could be hundreds of times worse than the reactor because it's gone through a fuel cycle, a full cycle. And it's incredibly destructive, the emissions. It's two billion times more toxic than industrial poison. Think about that statement. Decontamination operations were therefore relatively effective, but you can't be effective. It's ludicrous to suggest you're effective. If you're only cleaning up one third, if, if you go to the job, if you got a job and you only do one third of the job, do you think your boss is going to keep going till you retire? No. Decontamination operations were therefore relatively effective, although they could only be conducted in a small part of the area. See, you just cancelled out the previous assertion that the decontamination operations were relatively effective. Although they could only be conducted in a small part of the area due to the dominance of the steep forested slopes. In fact, 60%, 67%, almost 70% of the initial radio cesium. And using radio cesium is the complete, it's, it's unbelievable evil to only... Uh, claimed the single isotope. How many studies have we covered like that? Tens of thousands now over the last decade alone of 
disassertion of radio cesium. It was calculated it remains stored in the forest's landscapes, 67% of radio cesium. So 100% of the plutonium, 100% of the americium, 100% of the neptunium and the strontium, 100% of the curium, and the list goes on and on and on and on and on. I couldn't actually cover it all in a two-hour period. Isotopes remain sequestered or loosely sequestered in the force. But see, again, right, the plume covered, there was a blanket covered force, but, you know, think, Think of dust in your house when you open your window and the sun shines through a beautiful day and you're sitting in that right spot on the couch and you look at the beam of sun and you see all this dust floating. That's how radiation reacts. But radiation has another attribute that dust doesn't have is it pulses energy at the speed of light every second, which means it's a little engine. It's a little tiny nuclear engine that is a wrecking machine to everything with replicating cells. So when it's in your body... No matter how small the pulse is, and the majority of it is very big, but like tritium is a very small pulse of energy, that's enough still to, to destroy millions of DNA, chromosomes, uh, cells every second. Your body can't repair all of that, and at the same time it has to try to contain the radioisotope, and it takes decades to build a tumor around it. We, they call it a sarcophagus, but it's a tumor. which may contribute to further downstream radio cesium dispersion during the erosive. And the problem with the story is there's so many facets that the average person has no hope of piecing that puzzle together on their own. These are one-ton bags. There's around 30 million of them. It's hard to comprehend how many we're talking about. They're, they're everywhere. It's everywhere. And so a lot of the, you know, again, they're claiming the only thing in the bags is cesium-137. Plutonium was found in every sample ever taken in Japan when it was checked. And given that only a limited portion of the initial population returned in 2019, 30%, 2019, eight years later, 30%, which is quite the stretch, actually, it raises the question as to whether decontaminating a small percentage of the contaminated area is worth the effort, the price, and the amount of waste generated. And what about the victims, the homeless, and the destitute? Because the nuclear industry didn't go there. Nuclear academics didn't go there. Nuclear universities never went there. Nuclear loudmouth students. I, I think nuclear students are some of the worst humans imaginable because they're vicious thugs who are trying to prove themselves that they hate humans and the 8 million species. One of these radio, so they can get a dominant job themselves. One of these radioactive contaminants, cesium, one of these, one of these 1,000 contaminants, which is dirty bomb. These are dirty bombs. These are catastrophic to everything we're replicating cells. It's considered to be the most serious risk to the local population because it emits a high abundance in a, in a high abundance and has a relatively long half life of 30 years. So that person should lose their degree immediately. Like, they're, they're beyond dishonest. They're actually evil, what they're talking. Suggesting that cesium is the only isotope and the one you should worry about is so far-fetched, uh, you can beat them in a court of law in a heartbeat. They have no defense against that assertion whatsoever. A decontamination roadmap established in January 2012. It's still melting down today, by the way under the direct supervision of the Japanese government. Well, the reason they're framing it that way is because they left TEPCO in charge, but TEPCO was actually nationalized right away because it went bankrupt. So it's the Japanese government. And the reason TEPCO is still around is because they don't want the nuclear industry to be the fall guy. They want TEPCO to be the fall guy if it all blows up in their faces and they can just dissolve TEPCO and the problem goes away for the nuclear industry. And this is what they've done for every nuclear accident in history, by the way. A de and just a single reactor in Japan is worse than all nuclear meltdowns in history combined. The decontamination program was implemented in special areas where targets were set with regards to the exposure to the public to, get a load of this, air dose rates. So if, first off, like if you're just a layman, you can say, well, 
you know, scratching up 30% of the topsoil, 33% of the topsoil, and leaving 60% of it there, means you can't change the dose rate. They allow residents to return to their day-to-day -day lives. And so whoever wrote, whoever the people that done the study uh, are so, are so like, and what they mean by that is, you, you know, the buildings, they leave the bags right there and say it's safe to move back. And, oh, we powered wash the roof and the gutters. You'll be okay. Have a little faith in the government. I wouldn't do you no wrong. Well, quite the contrary. So you can see one, two, three, four, and it was edited by Susan Brantley, Pennsylvania State University, University Park in Pennsylvania. And so you know who, like, that person would cut your throat in a heartbeat. Regard to the exposure to the public to air dose rates that would allow residents to return. It's like hard to believe that they actually said that in this study. Let me, let me see if I can give you an example of these fake studies. Because I've heard so many arguments, they usually gather up, the majority of the times actually, I'll gather up a rebuttal and I'll poke it in a folder and then I can never find the folder. But it's dear and, I, and sometimes it'll show up, sometimes it won't. Uh, And sometimes I forget the keywords. And sometimes it takes a little few extra seconds to populate. My system's still pretty fast. It was the best of the best you could buy when I got it. With the intentions that I can bring you any kind of documentation and it would assimilate into right into the, as we're doing the show, right? Now, normally we do this live. For over a decade, we've done the live streams five days a week, unless I was on the ocean doing research expeditions. But on August the 24th, when they decided they're going to come out with the official cover story, Rumble and YouTube would no longer let me live stream. Not, not the companies, but some hackers, that I'm assuming, or just insiders for nuclear industry. We're waiting for that... Uh, I spilt it right, so <clears throat> I have a hang on anyway. I hate it when that happens to me. Just one more try. Oh, well, can't win them all. I should have showed up. I apologize to everybody for the delay. Let's keep going. I'm not going to keep waiting. Sometimes my system will do that. Pretty rare, though. In regard to the exposure to the public to air dose rates that would allow residents to return to their... Well, like, it's airborne. You don't go back. A single atom sequestering your muscles, your organs, and your bones, your body attacks it for the rest of your life immediately every second of the day and tries to build a sarcophagus, a sarcophagus around it. And but every time it pulses, it's destroying millions of DNA and chromosomes and cells. And so it has to try to repair that every second too. And, and if you get a whole bunch into you, now your body is producing, and it does that with white blood cells to repair. But if you keep bioaccumulating it through the drinking and food and breathing it, being, and being in the nuclear wasteland itself, the areas were mainly residential, including zones located within a radius of 20 meters around the houses and roads or cultivated areas, mainly paddy fields, mainly paddy fields. Forests were not, forests were not targeted because the implementation of decontamination is technically complicated, less efficient in the forest. So... The main, mainly residential in the nuclear wasteland, they call it no-go zone because they don't want to call it a nuclear wasteland, and they should be held accountable for that, including 
because it stops you from understanding and comprehending the importance of protecting yourself, which is evidence that they're trying to harm you if you go there, including zones located within a radius of 20 meters. So decontamination, I can't use the word decontamination because you can't do it. Scratching up the topsoil 60 feet around, 20 meters around a, a house in a nuclear wasteland don't quantify, qualify rather, or quantify decontamination. It don't. It can't. Like if I go in, if I go into a dump, right, right into a, the New York dump, the great big New York dump, and uh, I go in there and I clear out a spot sixty feet and build, put a building there and sixty feet around it and remove all the garbage, and I put it up for sale in real estate. How many people do you think is going to buy it? How many real estate agents is going to show it off? None. But this is worse. You're talking about stuff that's 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison, and they're acknowledging it's airborne. And so mainly paddy fields is the rice fields. It's, it's hard to comprehend how insane this industry actually is. And, and it will, there's nothing it won't say to trick you into complacency. There's nothing they won't say. There's no lie they won't tell. There's no crime they won't commit. There, there is no limit on their evil. Foresters are not targets because the implementation of decontamination is technically complicated. Technically complicated. You know stuff that's two billion times more toxic than industrial poison, for goodness sakes. And burying it in the ground in bags that only meant to last a couple of years, you're just going to put it back into the water tables. It's an industry and a... It's an industry of morons. They're, they're real life morons, and, and they make good money, but they they're they're incapable of understanding how evil they actually are. That's why they get the job. These areas were mainly residential. They're missing um, they're missing chromosomes basically. These areas mainly residential, including zones located within twenty meters of house. They're cultivated areas. So 3% of the land was what they, they picked up 30 million one-ton bags in of, this so, of, of a so-called, their version of a contaminated zone. The whole country is contaminated. And Tokyo was, they should have evacuated 36 million people. And there was numerous reports that they were wanted to build the capital, the government, 300 miles away, 200 miles away. And there, there's all kinds of different stories from all the major medias. They were going to move the government out of Tokyo because it's a nuclear wasteland. All of the embassies ran away from different countries. Sweden, Russia, Canada, uh, many, many countries. South Korea, all of them evacuated out of Tokyo 240 kilometers away. As the air dose rates in the living area reduced by 30% to 50% on average, allowing a residence to return. The air dose rate was uh, now the air dose rate in, in Tokyo was 270 times more than Weapons Faller Peak. Covered that last night, right? Many, many times before. So the, the air dose rate in Tokyo, 270 times more than Fallout and cesium. They're only acknowledging again, which is important in this story, by the way. Unfortunately, it's 270 times higher than Weapons Faller Peak. It, that's a nuclear. That's not a nuclear wasteland. That's get the frig editor and never go back land. The fact that cesium remained elevated in river systems showed that the forest continued to provide a significant contribution. Again, to suggest that cesium-137 and it's almost like when I'm recording, when I'm screen capturing these stories, the first thing I gotta do is read the story. Then I go back and screen capture the story. If I find laws, then I'll come back. And depending on how many laws, because I might just skip the story, because you can't keep up with everything, right? And um, i got to go back and screen, read it again, and this time screen capture it. But the minimum amount, because i, I got to tell the story. And if I don't do stuff like that, it'll take me three or four hours to tell the story. I mean, there's a street there where seven people dropped dead in the first year. 
a shopping street in Fukushima City, 70 miles away. The fact that cesium, and let me challenge that narrative because that's going to crop up a lot coming up in a few minutes. <clears throat> it's insane. That's the only way you can really describe it. Here, let me try this. Here's some stuff coming up. Good stuff. Uh, I'll show you a model in a minute, too. I just want to talk about plutonium, Neptunium for a second. Here we go. Let's just do that. But this week we've done a lot of studies, ac academic studies. S uh, special report, plutonium levels suggest the fuel rods were shattered during the hydrogen explosion. It wasn't a hydrogen per se explosion. The hydrogen was created by the nuclear meltdown. But it's a zirconium cladding of the fuel pellets, or the fuel rod, and inside is the fuel pellets of uranium plutonium. <coughs> the plutonium levels suggest the fuel rods were shattered during the nuclear explosion, is what I should say. But the, the, the official cover story is calling it hydrogen. And the hydrogen that nuclear makes is different than natural hydrogen. Plutonium evaporated and spread around as gas after Fukushima meltdown. Reactor 4, which is one of the first pictures I showed you earlier. So it's hard to appreciate what spread around means. Well, think about picking up 30 million one-ton bags and all of them got plutonium in it. I apologize. That's what I should have done, was turn the volume down so you didn't have to listen. Nuclear fuel fragments found over a mile away were ejected from the reactor core in the explosions. Okay, so cesium, 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 so at the top of the page, Cesium is mentioned 134 times. 134 times. That's the only one they're mentioned is cesium. Cesium, cesium. And this was a study from 10 days ago, this particular study we're looking at. Cesium, cesium, cesium. So if you read through this, what are you going to tell somebody if you, if you mention it to them? You're going to talk about cesium. Even if you don't want to, cesium is going to come out of your mouth. You can't avoid it, right? And so none of this means anything because they're refusing to acknowledge what actually happened. First time plutonium reported outside the Fukushima plant, which is not simply not true, right? That's NHK, that's the Japanese media. You know, they're not going to be overly honest. Uh, a study published in 2012, two days before the first anniversary, said plutonium found far away from Fukushima from the nuclear fuel fragments blown out after the explosion. And because this is important, we're, we're going to methodically bring in documentation, hopefully. <laughs> um, well, there was multiple explosion. Reactor 1 exploded immediately. Uh, reactor 3 exploded. Left nothing but a stump. Reactor four exploded, and they they had the explosion from reactor one. They got the explosion from reactor three, and that's not the right plume, but that's the explosion. Well, let me see if I can find it for you. Here we go. Let me do this. I 
might just check the volume real quick. Oh, that's loud. Um, that's reactor three. Hang on. That's reactor three. I think I zoomed in on it in a second. So that's reactor three. And so let me slow this down. Let me come in. I want you to see. So see the explosion, right? Boom, right? That's an incredible explosion. The building. Let me get. It's that middle one right over there, which are the same as this one, same as the other one. So that middle one, what you're going to see is these great big chunks on both sides of it that'll go up, but then fall back down at a high rate of speed. That's the fuel pool in the reactor cores. And I'll just play that to normal speed. I think that's normal speed. Yeah, that's normal speed. So you can see the big chunks falling back down. See how the smoke doesn't fall down, the smoke keeps going up. So the stuff that's falling down, let's do that again, right there. So you can see these big pieces falling down. That's the fuel pool in the reactor core. And we know that because they're, they're missing from the building. They were at the top of the building. But we also know that when they ran out of homeless and got the basics cleaned up in both of these reactors, they both had that particular attribute. It's, it's undeniable. Any, any academic nuclear industry that sees these pictures, are kind of, yeah, fuel pool is gone, the reactor core is gone. And reactor four, which is this one here, that the math that they gave out was 2% uh, of plutonium. It was plutonium. And so if you're very, very, if you're only using their numbers, you got uh, 21,000 pounds of plutonium. And and um, two kilograms, a little over four pounds, is enough to poison everybody on the planet. Now, it could take you decades to, for that to manifest or get diagnosed, but when you're talking about 21,000 pounds in each of the buildings, plutonium likely ejected from the fuel pools during explosions up to several miles from the reactor. That's the NRC, the nuclear industry in TEPCO. Well, that's uh, scumbag Gunderson. Second explosion, more like a bomb at Fukushima. Spent nuclear fuel flew 30 kilometers away. That's the Journal Tribune. Spent nuclear fuel flew 30 kilometers away. Pellets collected by the military. Well, you're not collecting pellets. These are lethal doses. You can't collect pellets. Very strange material like europium found. Should have evacuated out to 300 kilometers. Way past Tokyo. It was 2013. Uh, again, I forgot to, to drop the volume so you didn't have to listen to that noise. A large quantity, uh, quantity of Neptunium-239 flew at least 60 kilometers from Fukushima meltdown and decays into plutonium-239. And that's from uh, Nikan SPA, September the 13th, uh, 2011. They heard it from a university researcher. So at the site itself, there's 10 plus sieverts per hour. Uh, direct exposures, 10 plus is like three sieverts is a lethal dose to any any human. It's a much more lethal dose because you're wearing paper suits. And so anybody you see with a paper suit, that's a victim that they're sending in there. That's, you, you cannot get an academic in a paper suit to go hang out at Fukushima. It's never going to happen. This is Australia, and, and usually when you ever get any tidbits of information from the industry, it's somebody who's retired, and they're, and they're even then they're very dishonest. Now, the stacks that they have for the fuel pools, because the fuel pools are still splitting atoms at all nuclear power plants worldwide, is these long, skinny, t very tall stacks, around 700 feet tall, and the plants are surrounded by farms. So the tall stacks is because this stuff is so light, it, they want it to fl a lot of it will land. In the local area, not 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 the bigger percentage of it, but a percentage, a, a decent percentage, and that's why these are active, fertile nuclear power plant or farms, 
are always permitted to farm right up to the fences of the nuclear power station. And the security will never harass them. They won't eyeball them. And to be a security guard at a nuclear power plant, you need a high school degree and a gun permit. Because, you know, terrorists might go in there and steal the fuel, right? No, moron. The fuel will kill you instantly. So look at the cesium-137. Cesium-137. And so the idea is just make it impossible for you to concentrate on anything else. Look at it over here. Let's look at the other explosion, because the only time there's cesium, look at all the times the time there's cesium, 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 and everything is based on cesium. See, very complicated looking, right? But you're refusing to acknowledge what friggin' happened. Oh, let me check the volume for you. Okay, the volume's off, thank goodness. Let me, let me get fast forward. So the camera, I'll get it out of the way. The camera was about 30 kilometers away, security camera of some type. And so then they have to zoom in on it. So it's not a very good picture. Let me play it from there. And that's, let me check the speed, what speed have we got here. That's 25%. Um, I'll go up to 100%. No, get around 100, that's 150. Okay, so this is the normal speed, I think. I'll tell you. Yeah, that's the normal speed. So let's do that again. And you can see, and now I'm going to slow it down to 25% so you can actually see uh, the criticality take place. It should happen here any moment. So now it's one quarter of its normal speed when it does happen. Yeah. All right, this is the spot. I apologize for the delay. And bring it on, baby. That's brutal, isn't it? Oh, okay. Let's try it there. So that's unit one detonating. And remember, the buildings are 190 feet tall. They're, they're 19 story, 65 meter buildings. These are big buildings. Okay, I got it back to his normal speed. See the plume? If you breathe that, you're dead. And the pellets that are left, now that's reactor three detonation. That's actually a bit better, right? Look at the fuel pool at the very top going straight up. So the fuel pool is at the very top. And what do you think is creating all this? It looks like dust, right? That's the fuel pellets and the fuel rods and everything coming apart from the, uh, the detonation. And that that's incredible fuel pools and reactor cores falling back down to the earth. So why are they talking about cesium? Because that's the last thing. If I was doing the study, that would be the very last thing I would cover. Now, I would cover it because it's easy to find it with your Geiger counters as a gamma. And then you would do a mathematical equation to extrapolate the plutonium, uranium, the real stuff, the curium isotopes and everything else. And so the study, though, is, and you've seen it earlier, I explained it to you. Well, I explained what they were saying to you where they said the biggest issue was cesium-137. Well, the reason it's the biggest issue because it's the biggest law. That's the cover story. But, but anybody in the academic community will take it and do a mathematical equation to extrapolate the real concerning isotopes like the curium. Like strontium-90, there's 100 times more strontium-90 for every 137 produced after the first 30,000 uh, days. And it keeps that ratio for about tens of thousands of days. Remember, reactor three was a mixed oxide fuel. And so we don't have, that's the first time, well, it's not the first time actually, is it? Because the wind scale was a mixed oxide fuel that melted down too. And, you know, it's a big, 55 decades, uh, 1957 or 59, I can't remember. 57. Because Mayak blew up too, right? And in 59, you had Santa Susana, which was equal to 460 
Three Mile Islands melting down at the same time in radioactive fallout that they admit to. That's what they admit to. And still melting down today. That was a sodium reactor. And now there's an extra, because they hit it, there's a half a million people living within 10 miles of the ongoing nuclear meltdown and uh, all these decades of perpetual radioactive fallout. And there's not a street there that the majority of the kids don't have some disease, cancers, and everything else. So using cesium-137, they should be disqualified from being allowed to have kids and lose their degrees. That's how egregious that kind of a betrayal actually is. It's completely... Uh, the industry, its entire legacy is predicated upon deceit and dishonesty. And after 80 years of it, they feel like they're entitled to do it. And because they hold a key position through your universities and your medias and seed it, those institutions with their inbreeds themselves, y your, your system is completely dysfunctional and you are in great jeopardy. So Prime Minister Japan's current idiot in chief, Kishida, plans an income tax cut for households. Well, he didn't have to ban Russia's commodities, the gas, oil, and coal. Russia just sold to somebody else. You were going to hurt Russia. But you did hurt all the Japanese people. And so you caused this massive inflation that the United Nations did at 195 countries. And... Um, You had 195 countries that caused the artificial inflation, and they had no way of replacing the gas and coal and oil. And so now he wants to kick back to the, the victims. He's feeling guilty? No, he's he's understanding that they're turning against him. He's trying to... And this, this is what they always done, too. They do the same routine, and a lot of times they'll get away with the majority. And when it comes from people like Mary Yamaguchi, then that's exactly what's going on. That's... She's the Japanese in charge of the public relation propaganda. So the Associated Press will come out with a story, and uh, 16, 1800 medias worldwide use spider bots to aggregate the story automatically off the Associated Press's website. And so everybody gets the same picture, the same paragraphs, but the same author at the same time worldwide. And that's called incredible, brutal. And it's, it's always propaganda. And so when it comes to Fukushima, you see Mary Yamaguchi, then you know it's, that's what's going on. Japan's Prime Minister Kishida said, Monday's preparing to take bold economic measures. Well, you just robbed the house. You just robbed the children of their abilities, their extracurricular activities, because you bankrupted them by driving up the commodities in the country by shunning the only country that had the commodities. And so you caused this artificial inflation. And everybody's suffering from it. And now you're going to throw back uh, five cents on every dollar you robbed them of. You're a despicable subhuman species, you people are in the nuclear industry, including an income tax cut for households hit by inflation. What do you mean hit by inflation? Everybody hit by inflation in the 195 UN countries that without no referendum in any country implemented these draconian embargoes against Russia. I mean, you, you know, there was 90 wars on the go. Why was Russia the only one that you had an economic blowback from? Because it was obviously planned, right? He said he is determined to help people ride out the impact of the soaring prices for food, utilities, no, it's everything. Like the prices have gone nuts since the, the staged event in Russia. Japan time wins two goals. Now we covered that earlier in the week, right? But they're puking it up again, the Japan Times. Climate catastrophe in the Himalayans. Twin track the resilience strategies Let me bring it up on the screen here. So a glacier lake outburst flood, 
claimed 30 lives and destroyed a 1200 megawatt hydroelectric dam and caused widespread damage downstream. And they say dangerous outcome of climate change induced glacier retreat. Um, let me go back. So, what we've done on the studies on the west coast of Canada, we had done six years, four to five months a year, looking at the species that are coming home f on the ocean. And we had to go back year after year because the species were missing. Now we need to see if they recovered or started, you know, started, some of them started recovering. There was over 7,000 highly visible species in the tidal zones. Um, and so I spent six years doing the coastline. One of the things I noticed, because you're off, sh you're off, you're out on the ocean there, you can see the glaciers from the Rocky Mountains and the Cascades. And by the third year, they were gone, and nobody refused to acknowledge it. And that water is really, that cold glacier water has many, many important attributes that most people don't consider. Um, so in droughts, for instance, which is pretty normally pretty rare, in droughts, uh, the glaciers would melt a little bit more, right? Now, normally that cold water each year in the summertime regulated the temperatures of the rivers, the streams, the lakes, the ponds, the estuaries, and along the coastline, and the coastline, the ocean itself, as it made its way a thousand or whatever miles, thousands of miles to the coastline. So it regulated the temperatures of the streams so that during summer when uh, frogs and insects and everything else, the whole ecosystem was having babies, the temperature was regulated and it's been like that for thousands of years, right? And so when you get rid of the glaciers, you're no longer regulating the temperature. But not only that, the, the extra water during droughts, the glaciers melt a bit more and that would lift the levels of the rivers and allow the salmon to get up, to migrate up the river and lay their eggs like that was that's built into the ecosystem, so to speak. And so when you get rid of the glaciers, within a couple of years, the impacts of that is going to be catastrophic because the insects are not going to show up. That means there's no food. F and, you know, the majority of fish species and frogs and important feeder fish too, right? And uh, like the mosquitoes are very important feeder too because it, there's all kinds of... The birds will eat around 500 a day to raise their hatchlings and bring back to the nests, right? And uh, frogs are dependent upon it. Uh, fr um, fish are dependent up. There's all kinds of other insects that eat mosquitoes, for instance. So many different or uh, keystone species, what we call keystone species, were permanently affected by that. Five workers at Fukushima plant. Now this is today. Uh, five workers at the Fukushima plant doused with radioactive fluids. So what they're talking about is the water filtration system, known as the ALPS. The advanced liquid processing system removes most of the radioactive substances from the contaminated water at Fukushima number one nuclear power plant. Five workers were accidentally splashed with the liquid containing radioactive material were cleaning the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant, plant operator, TEPCO, which shouldn't exist, said. And two of the five workers were hospitalized for decontamination treatment and medical observations. And a doctor determined the possibility of both men sustaining burns due to radiation exposure was low. And so at the end of this, I'll show you why this story is a ludicrous story. According to TEPCO, which is quite convenient, right? According to the people that got the most to lose and have the biggest incentive to lie, no injuries to the skin were found in the exposed areas. And the two have not shown any major changes in their health. Well, it could take a decade for that to manifest or get diagnosed. There's, there's heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline. There's incredible adverse effects uh, that shows up down the road. It's just because you don't see it right away, it's radiation, and it will manifest if you did. And if it's on your skin, then you will absorb it. Everything that touches your skin is quickly going in your blood and distributed throughout your entire body within a few minutes. The accident occurs at around 10.40 a.m. October 25th when five workers, 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 
and so typically what we know about workers at Fukushima are homeless and the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language. We've never seen like nuclear companies saying we're at Fukushima and it's pretty tough here and we're getting the job done and we got the university here and the university there and the students and everybody's researching it and we're coming up with solutions. You'll never, ever, ever hear a statement like that. In 12 years, you'll never hear that statement. We're cleaning the pipes for the plant's advanced liquid processing system, which is used to treat, the, and I always get upset when I hear the word treat, contaminated water, water, contaminated water, accumulated at the plant. Well, the water they were, that they're alluding to is they're pouring water over melted reactor cores. First off, the, the buildings lost the majority of their inventories right away the fuel pools, the reactor cores, and everything else. They were washing by pouring the nitric acid into the piping. Um, that won't separate it, right? It doesn't work. You can't separate radiation that way. You have to chop it out. The hose is used to drain the waste liquid containing radioactive substances into the tank where it detached, became detached, and around 100 millisievers of this fluid spilled out, 100 millisievers, 10, or 100,000 microsieverts. 100 millisieverts. And just let me explain that one too. Because you won't see these numbers no more, right? That's one of the very, very, in, in all these years, that's one of the very few times they gave us a number. They gave us, as a second story, gave us a different number. And it's incredibly important. All this clicking makes me hungry. Just kicking. Just kidding. Uh, I'm using these. Uh, this was a. Uh, Nikol, which is a Japanese newspaper, translated by X S K F. Two thousand millisieverts of better ray was a water leak in the vicinity. So the leak coming out of the tanks was two sieverts an hour per liter. In a single liter. So that's a lethal dose. So that's the stuff they're saying was going that's it's coming into the system itself, the so-called ELP system. And I'm going to show you the, the headlines about the actual ELP system. It didn't work in 2014. Neither did the Riva system, neither did the Siri system. I'll show you that documentation. I'm also going to show you the tanks where, when they were built and, and, and the relevant information about that. And then I'll bring that together after these two stories as, as the counter. So around 100 millisieverts of fluid spilled out. So which meant 100 millisieverts, there's 1,000 millisieverts in a sievert. So there's 2,000 millisieverts in that liter. So it's a very small amount that got out of that liter, right? You can put it in the bottom of a teacup, basically, is what they're talking about. That's what got out. That's what they're saying. It sprayed them, right? It, became detached and around 1,000 millimeters of the fluid spilled out. But listen, the liquid splashed onto the five workers. They were wearing protective gear, full face masks, which prevented ingestion of the fluid. Well, if it touches the skin, it's absorbed immediately into the body within 60 seconds or something. And within a minute, it's distributed through the entire body. And if you got nothing on your head, you're here, you need to shave your head right away. You need to throw away any clothes you had on. However, the liquid reached the skin of four workers. Well, ain't that interesting. Despite immediate rinsing at the plant, the radiation levels of the bodies of two men did not fall below the standard threshold. They're only measuring for better, by the way. Of four becquels per square centimeters. Four becquels per square centimeters. <laughs> the standard threshold for four becquels per square centimeter. 
I've never heard that one before. Thus, the two workers, one in the 20s, whose entire body was found to be exposed, but like what the timer got out was the size of a small, of the, of the bottom of a teacup. And the others in his 40s, or lower body, both arms were confirmed to be exposed, transported to a hospital in Fukushima City, which is the worst hospital you want to go to. That one's owned by TEPCO, I bet. The radiation levels of the bodies of two men did not fall below the standard threshold of four beckles per square meters. But why, wouldn't, why don't you tell us what it was? It was not, if it didn't fall below it, how high was it? Why wouldn't you tell us that? Okay, so they're... Okay, let's, let's start right there. Four beckles. And, um, and now I'll show you first the tanks. We'll talk about the tanks very quick. Is that the one I want? Yeah, let's talk about the tanks first. So um, uh, this one was saying a siever per hour. Uh, two years, they haven't stopped the highly radioactive leak. Uh, first off, you can't stop a leak in a building that looks like that. And second off, you can't stop a leak in this reactor four you look now. You can't stop a leak in reactor three because it ejected the reactor cores and the fuel pools right out of the buildings. And when you put the two of them together, just one of these reactors was worse than all nuclear meltdowns in history combined. But at the top of it, it had around 10 reactor cores and two fuel pools. And fuel pools at the very top of the building, they're gone. And so they, they left these stumps there, because these are just stumps of 190 foot, 65 meter buildings, 19 story buildings. These stumps, excuse me, should have been razzed to the ground. But they left them there, they put covers on them, and then they pretend they went in and got the fuel out of the pool. I just got to set the stage before you can, because the story's so convoluted and, and there's so many lies, right, that even if you're, and a novice, then you you can look at the picture and say, okay, well that is not at the top, a hundred feet above that wreckage. You you can wrap your mind around that, right? And so, why is the the CBS at the top, the biggest media in America, by the way, CBS? You have BBC at the very top over here, Rupert Winfield Hayes, and Seth Dorn, by the way, is a senator's son up there. CNN, and, and who you can expect to be scum anyway. And then you got ABC, Cecilia Vega, who's now a press secretary at the White House for CBS, and at that time was ABC Australia. So you got Western Media, you got BBC and from the United Kingdom, and you got ABC, the head media in Australia, all coming up pretending they're in a building that don't exist. If that don't scare you, then you should go get professional help. Japan's professor, a thousand years from now, contaminated water from Fukushima may be still hemorrhaging into the ocean. Well, of course it will. The buildings are just, what didn't go up went down into the earth into what's loosely known as the China Syndrome. It's just a reference that it's gone deep into the earth. Okay. So, Mary Yamaguchi, 2013. Tank at the crippled. They're crippled. Does, by the way, does that look crippled to you? Am I just being a ninny? These buildings are comp nuclear meltdowns that are completely gone. Chernobyl has nothing in common with these. Chernobyl was brutal, but these things are completely a whole different world. They're 100 to 1,000 Chernobyls each. So August 20, 2013, they had 1,000 tanks. 1,000 tanks. And by the way, a single reactor can fill up a thousand tanks six times a day because it needs 4,500 tons a minute every 1,440 minutes a day. So 
That was 2013. This is 2014. Marie Yamaguchi again. Now they got 1,200 industrial tanks. 2017, they got 900 tanks, large tanks, they say, right? And this picture cracks me up was, try walking with both of your feet flat on the ground. Try, try doing it. And then try walking with your arms almost perfectly straight, like, and like they're walking on steel sheets, by the way. Now, if you fill up the tank at 2.2 sieverts per liter of just beta, because you can't have just beta, it's got to be loaded with alphas, neutrons, and gammas, and then by proxy the x rays, you couldn't build another tank there because that's a lethal dose one tank, 1.4 million beta of beta radiation. But it's impossible to just have better. And the problem with the tanks was, and what I'm going to show you here is 2022, they got uh, 1,000 tanks in this line right here over at the beginning. In 2021, they have 1,000 tanks. 2000, Mary Yamaguchi, 2023. 2023, they have... Uh, 1,000 tanks, the third line from the bottom. Mary Yamaguchi, July the 14th this year, 2023. So this is the, the so-called ELPS filtration system in Futaba, which is uh, abandoned now for over 12 years, stored in 1,000 tanks. So 2013, 2023, in 2013 they had 1,000 tanks, in 2023 they got 1,000 tanks. And 2019 water rose, they got, I'm not sure why that's there. Let me keep going through. They got 1,000 tanks in 2019. And should there be another quake, the tanks could crack, unleashing tainted liquid and washing highly radioactive debris into the ocean. Should, uh, which is an interesting statement, right? Highly radioactive debris into the ocean. Oh, workers could be seen atop the number three building getting equipment ready to lift the spent fuel rods at the storage pool. Uh, that's 2019. Well, that's 2014 over there. There is no top of the building. You can't get fuel of a pool that don't exist. Okay. So suggesting people at the top of the buildings is the definition of in, in, insanity. All right. So the tanks basically were all built 2013, 2000, beginning of 2014. <coughs> now to the second part. So the water filtration system, two. April 21st, three years, one month after Fukushima melted down. The advanced liquid processing ELPS has yet to function reliably. No, it, ha it had yet to function. And the problem with that was everything went into the tanks, right? Because the, the official story is nothing went into the ocean. So they had all these tanks. In 2014, this is three and a half years later in August, the Riva system, which is also the exact same as the ELP system, had been unused and kept out of operation. The problem with it was that everything became contaminated itself in the process of the radioactive material. The radiation levels measured in the system posed a risk to the workers during operation and maintenance of the system. And one of the problems would be dismantling and disposing of the decontamination system. So they tried to do it. They turned it on, and you couldn't change the filter. So... They also, uh, a groundwater bypass operation where they, they were going to pump the water coming down the mountain or out into the ocean so it didn't run through the site. That didn't work. They were going to build a fence to stop the radiation and using the word, actually using the word leaking. Do the buildings look like they're leaking to anybody? The word leaking should be banned from everything. We just got to get rid of that word. It shouldn't be allowed to be used. It's been weaponized against humanity and the 8 million species. So typical, you can't build a fence to stop radiation because you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. 
how the frig is a fence going to stop that? And how can a fence stop something when it don't have a top or a bottom when it comes to radiation? And at the time, TEPCO asked the government to not to announce they had committed to constructing the fence as the utility was concerned that the billion dollar construction costs would increase its debt. No, they can't build a fence is what the reality of it was. TEPCO's ice wall operation not meeting expectations. Expectations? Why the freak would you build an ice wall? Why would you do something like that? Well, because they knew something the average person didn't. Was that the reactors were gone. So then the series system was the other filtration system. Uh, but they had a Korean system, which is the same as the series system. The series system was supposed to filter cesium-137. And uh, I just, I hate that word. After all these years, I actually hate that word. And I have to cover it all day, every day. And I despise it every time I say it. Like if I had a nuclear scientist here in a headlock, every time I say uh, cesium-137, I have to give him a couple of shots, uh, like a hockey player, a couple of shots in the head. If I had a nuclear academic, a nuclear scientist, if I had um, any of them, nuclear professor, it doesn't have to be any one of them, any of them, and had them in the headlock, every time I had cesium, I'll punch him in the head because I wouldn't be able to stop myself. It wouldn't be a hard punch. It wouldn't be a nice one either. TEPCO plans to dump the water stored at Fukushima Daiichi into the Pacific Ocean. They plan to. They haven't stopped doing it. It's 2013. So the plant has already released enormous amount of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of leaks from the reactor buildings. Well, the reactor buildings don't have any leaks. They're gone, man. The reactor cores, the fuel pools, are, they're gone. Bang! Let me turn the volume down and turn it back on, hopefully, when I finish my slurp. And I got that spite with lemon because it's good in your throat anyway. And so I'm using the peroxide. And I, I cover my whole face. I'll just take and splash my face like it's water in the summertime where you're trying to cool down. Do my whole face. And splash down my jugular vein behind my ears. And the same on this side. And your body just sucks in all this oxygen all of a sudden. And it lasts quite a while, right? It absorbs directly into your skin. It dries off within about 30 seconds. It's gone into your skin, and you're getting all this oxygen. So if you got like a dry hack or something, that's going to get rid of it every time. And right away, too. And, and like it's, it's hard for your brain to accept that that just happened. And your, your brain's like, I, might, I think I'm supposed to hack, right? And you're like, no, man, you're okay. And your brain's like, no, 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 uh, there's something wrong. I'm supposed to hack here. Uh, you know, so I'm d in just two and a half days, I had this for three three weeks, nasty stuff. And in two, my immune system was compromised. And, and in two and a half days, I slept like a rock again last night. That's the first time in probably a year and a half, two years. That's two nights in a row. <laughs> I sleep all night. It's wonderful. I mean, I got up 6.30 this morning. After the water passed through the crippled units, it is processed through the series system to remove the cesium. So you're going to put absurd radiation through the system, and it's going to extract the cesium-137. That's what they're saying, see? So look at it this way. You've got 200 million atoms on the head of a needle. You can't see it. So let's say 100,000 of them are cesium-137, which is ridiculous to suggest there's that many in you know, a 200,000 atoms, right? Majority is going to be the curium isotopes. And they need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. But let's just say cesium is there at 100,000 be 100, becquels a second. And there's 200,000 becquels a second. And um, 200 million becquels on the head of a needle, you can't see it. So imagine trying to extract 100 million of them, or 100,000 of them even, or 100 million of them even, and everything else go somewhere else. And they're all the exact same sizes. It, like, you can't do it. Right? It, it's a bullshit story. 
meant to convince you that they had it under control. Now, do you, does, does that look like a thousand tanks to you right there? We've counted them. If you count all the small ones, and there's a lot of small ones, by the hundreds, uh, you still only come up with 750. It's going, like the idea of the tanks was to manipulate you into thinking they had it under control and make you complacent so you're not paying attention anymore. Ah, oh, it's nuclear, you know, it's out of my league. No, it's not. That's the wrong attitude. Typical plans to dump the water, store the Fukushima directly into the sea. This one shows the volume of the contaminated water required to be stored on the site will likely triple over the next three years. Well, first off, they never had no filtration system. For the first three years, where where did it go? Where did they put it? Right, the, the Riva system didn't work, and we and we know that, right? It, it can't work. See, the filter becomes so radioactive after twenty minutes, you can't get back in the building, let alone change the filter. The it's everything went straight into the ocean. You can't you can't contain it. can't contain it because the buildings are long gone and by day six right the whole story they're telling you is a, but I have to painstakingly go through the story because you deserve to know the difference right you deserve to be able to understand and encompass the full horror of what's really going on here and at some point you're going to Okay, so back to this story, two hospitalized after radioactive liquid exposure at Fukushima plant. So the Riva system didn't work. The help system didn't work. The, the tanks are empty. The tanks were, everything goes straight into the ocean. You can't filter it. And don't think they won't continue to lie to you about every other facet of the story because we've been covering it. dedicated to it and we do massive research expeditions too and we never got one in this morning I'll, I'll explain that i guess at the end of the video if i remember two men have been hospitalized after they were exposed to well basically because i had to go to the graduate day right two men have been hospitalized after they were exposed to radioactive liquid while cleaning a water filtration facility at direct of fukushima nuclear plant direct Two men have been hospitalized after they were exposed to radioactive liquid while cleaning a water filtration facility. No, it was a hose is what they're saying, right? They weren't cleaning the facility. They didn't sustain any visible injuries or complain of ill health. Well, you can't see it or smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or perceive it. So, of course, you didn't perceive it. And uh, this, who knows what year this is. This is the Diachi site. Well, they got the cover on reactor three, the cover on reactor four, which was the hoodwinking. And those buildings are these two. So those two buildings, I'll show them to you. So that's reactor four, and that's the reactor, well, that's the stump of it. It's underneath that. And they built that there to manipulate you into thinking that they were in the fuel pools. And you can't be in the fuel pool of a nuclear meltdown. And fuel pools don't even exist. The exposures occurred when they were cleaning pipes at TEPCO's filtration facility called the Advanced Liquid Processing System. Designed to, and I just explained it to you, it didn't work. And if it didn't work in the first three years when you had the most radioactive water imaginable, the most contaminated stuff in human history ever, at lethal doses by the liter for humans, and that uh, four, four liters of it at a subway station would kill everybody that walks past it for a million years, you can't filter that. Designed to treat water used in cooling nuclear fuel that remains at the plant. That remains at the plant because ev everything else went uh, into calm down Charlie mode. A hose channeling contemplated solutions came loose. A hose channeling contaminated solutions came loose. Channeling. What a, what a bizarre framing. A hose channeling contaminated solutions. Contaminated solutions. Solutions. Channeling radioactive uh, emissions. Contaminated solutions came loose, spraying the liquid on five workers. One of the victims were 6.6 .6 millisieverts, 6.6 or 66,000, or 
Yeah, 66,000 microsieverts is a better rate, and a microsieverts is about 740 counts per minute. 6.6 microsieverts is a better rate was detected exceeding a limit of 5.0 microsieverts. 5,000 uh, microsieverts, rather. Millisieverts is five millisieverts for set for cleaning and work at the plant. And so it, this is a huge amount of radiation we're talking about. But to suggest that the stuff going, channeling the radioactive material would be at these low numbers, that's why they're doing this story is to, it not even really, you know, the, the workers were, whoever they tricked and coerced into going in there, they're, the homeless, they gave them an extra 40 bucks and said, go over there and take that hose for a second. We need a pitcher for our website. The contaminated liquid seeped through his protective suit, which is a paper suit, seeped through his paper suit, exposing his entire body, seeped, see, like, you know what the word seep means, right? You know, there's a li very little amount, see, in, in the context we're talking about, and exposed his entire body, except his face, because he had a full face. The, like, the full face can't protect you from the emissions. Because uh, the, the filter in your full face can't filter that, right? It has to filter everything. It has to be a contained system. You can't filter something so small you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle and can't see it. You can't filter those atoms. Exceeding the limit of 5.0 millisieverts set for cleaning at the plant. The better A reading on the other victim's protective suit was 1.6. And remember, the protective suit is a paper suit. Here's what the protective suit looks like, by the way. Well, that, that's a pretty good one there. That's a bit better. They don't... The people outside the plant gets real suits, like coveralls. The people at the site get these paper suits. And look at the scum of the earth, International Atomic Energy Agency. And the reality was they only went to the site this year. They were only there five times in 12 years, all of them this year. Once to promote the uh, six, 30 million bags being used for farmland of radiation, 30 million one-ton bags. Uh, every time I see these paper suits, and they, they printed out the IAEA, and then taped it onto their suit, and now they're pretending they're in the reactor core of Unit 4. Right? They're, they're pretending they're at the very top of the building to your right. That's what they're pretending they're in the fuel pool that doesn't exist. And, and this this is this could be America for all we know. America got seventy identical plants. And the industry is more than evil enough to do that. The better ray, the two men were not wearing a waterproof outer layer as required for such cleaning work. It charged me to reconcile that these people think they're humans to write these stories, which was obviously the International Atomic Energy Agency handprint is all over that story. Now, both men were exposed to 0 0.11 millisieverts or less of gamma rays below a 0 0.6 millisiever limit set by TEPCO. TEPCO is not a decommission authority, nor are they in a position to make standards. And the people that wrote the article, I, I disrespect you more than anybody will ever know. You're, you're disgusting. The two men underwent decontamination procedures. Once, once it gets on your skin, it's absorbed directly into your body. You can't be decontaminated. And the radiation levels did not come down sufficiently TEPCO, why are you asking the criminal itself for the facts? Decontamination of the skin continued at the hospital where the two men are expected to stay for some time. So they got incredible radiation doses in that case. 
these were catastrophic doses. And the media coming out, oh, no, it was all within safety levels. Yeah, I guess I'm tritium on them. For some time, while well, they were put under observation at least two weeks, for two weeks. But uh, the adverse side effects might not show up for months, years, or decades. They will show up, though. That's a fact. Water treated by TEPCO's advanced liquid processing system that didn't work in 2014, which means it didn't work ever, had been stored at the complex, which was crippled. Crippled! Right? If you believe their version, then it looks like that. But if, if you believe my version, which is the real version, then it looks like, like it's supposed to look. The International Atomic Energy Agency conducts the first safety review on Fukushima water since the discharge. <clears throat> so there's nothing got out, only water, and they won't acknowledge the bags. It's pretty convenient, right? The International Atomic Energy Agency, which is not a regulatory agency, it doesn't have the sovereignty over any country, but is working on it. It doesn't have the authority and to compel anybody or any country to do anything. It's a think tank, basically, for United Nations, which is the military-industrial complex. Just like uh, many of their other organize, all of their organizations, subsidy, subsidy companies. It began its first safety review on Japan's discharge of treated, crippled, since it began in August. So they're saying that there's been no emissions until August. And so everybody ran away and left their homes behind, sorry, in the nuclear wasteland. That's the decontamination one. Uh, every house in uh, Koreyama, which is 375,000 people, and Fukushima City, which is around 300,000 people, every building, every structure is entitled to be decontaminated because it's so radioactive which means you're supposed to abandon it. You can't decontaminate a house. Bear with me. <coughs> and picking up one-ton bags is not decontamination. It's the opposite. You can't decontaminate the nuclear wasteland. You can't go there, clean it up, and make it habitable. You can pretend, and that's what you've been doing, but you can't actually do it. And picking up 30 million one-ton bags on 3% of the land. At one point they had, in uh, in Koryama City, they had 3,000 of these Geiger counters that measures in microsievers, instead of counts per minute, you might notice. And that the workers say they have to clean around these things regularly. Um, but, you know, these, it's acknowledged now these are garbage. These, weren't, these were meant to make you complacent and trick you and coerce you to go back in, into the nuclear wasteland. So, like, when they pick up these bags, they expect people to move into that house. And the vulnerable people who put their blind fate in the system which has a legacy of corruption and abuse. Uh, there's over 300 policemen that were guarding these communities, died of renal failure, liver, lung, respiratory problems, and just dropped dead, over 300 officers. China and Russia, which has uh, severely criticized the discharge and imposed a ban on Japanese seafood since August the 24th. Now, the August the 24th, uh, had a precursor, which was on July the 13th of 2023. A story came out of a, of a South Korean professor of nuclear and quantum engineering. So you should be able to trust him, right? Now, his official story was quite frightening. His uh, assertions is there was no meltdown. And this was backed up by the International Atomic Energy Agency and worldwide media since July the 13th of this year. The narrative changed. And so now they're saying nothing got out, particularly the 30 million one-ton bags, and that 
the total emissions was equal to 2.2 grams, and that's what's in the 1,000 tanks. So nothing got out, Dana. Which explains why you abandoned your communities, I would imagine, and picked up 30 million one-ton bags. Does that make sense, too? And so all they're going to release each year is divide 1.32 grams of this salt and get uh, 122 of that is what they're going to release each year into the environment. Now, don't, f don't forget for a second, these are the United Nations monsters, literally monsters. The plant operator so far ejected about 15,600 tons of water treated with a liquid processing system that removes the most radioactive nucleoids except for tritium. The tritium, of course, first off, the 30 million one ton bags, the word tritium has never been mentioned. And this didn't pick them up because they were bored. The food was banned in 14 prefectures, I highlighted for you. And uh, for f for 10 years, by 55 countries, the food was banned. So the industry just replaced the people in those countries and in increments over 10 years removed those restrictions. TEPCO follows through on the promise to compensate Japanese seafood producers suffering Fukushima-related reputational damage. Reputational damage. So seafood. Now, so the big trick now has been seafood instead of the 14 prefectures is the food you want to avoid at all costs. Because once it gets in the ocean, it's distributed uniformly throughout the ocean, which is now saturated with radioactive fallout. Let me show you some of that. Um, um, I just want to also cover that. So let me grab that. And let me find radioactive fallout model for everybody. And then I'll tell you that story. So this is 20 days of fallout of plutonium-239. This is 21 days later. But it's actually 15 days after the last meltdown. So this was the original story from July the 13th, 2023. Science outweighs irrational reasoning. This is the author, Yong Jong Il, is the professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering at CAS, which is South Korea, a major university, right? He said the discharge is like throwing three grams of sugar into the ocean. The discharge is like throwing three grams of sugar into the ocean. So the only thing they got out of there was equal to three grams of sugar. This, you know, how do you argue with a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering? Who are you going to believe? You're going to believe me, who shows you endless information. You're going to believe the a lot of people will believe the professor from the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering. Sorry, Dana, but he's he's a professor, Dana. He wouldn't lie to us. Well, you're very very wrong, unfortunately. That seems to be all he do. Letting them near your children is child abuse as far as I'm concerned. The discharge is like throwing a sugar cube of three grams into the ocean. The total amount of tritium included in the radioactive wastewater in the thousand tanks is approximately 2.2 grams as of April 2021. And Japan plans to release 0 0.062 grams per year. which is 122 of that little tiny flakes of salt, for instance. So you can't turn to your universities. They're claiming it's like three grams of sugar is all it got out of. And there's, and there's four reactors. I'm, I, I usually only show you two because the visuals are so stunning. Hopefully that breaks, hopefully that breaks through.
sorry about that. That was Roger in British Columbia. You know, I got to answer Roger's phone calls. And anybody who's been around a long time knows who Roger is. That's my buddy out there. He's 75, I think, now. He's an amazing friend, eh? The discharge is like throwing a sugar cube of three grams into the sea. Um, so it's, imp it's impossible, absolutely impossible, to have a conversation with the nuclear industry. It's impossible. D they've got 80 years of just perpetual laws. They're unequivocally the biggest threat to humanity in the 8 million species. TEPCO follows through on a promise to compensate Japanese seafood producers suffering Fukushima-related reputational damage. Reputational damage. So what they're saying is that nothing got out of there, and if you say something got out of there, that's reputational damage. And so TEPCO is throwing money at anybody that says, I got reputation, I can't sell my radioactive seafood. And so the concentrations on seafood, instead of the the five to ten billion pounds of rice they're exporting each year from the nuclear wasteland. And they're so bold and so out of control that they're growing food right alongside the nuclear meltdowns in an exclusion zone because it's a nuclear wasteland alongside of thousands of one-ton bags surrounded by millions of one-ton bags uh, in the middle of 14 prefectures that are banned by 55 countries for over a decade. In, in a incontestable, unassailable nuclear the documentation is completely unassailable. This is a nuclear wasteland we're talking about. But if you say that, you're, that's reputational damage. And in TEPCO, who is to shoulder the blame so the nuclear industry doesn't get the shit kicked out of it like it deserves, uh, everybody in the nuclear industry deserves to be beat up at least 75 times. Businesses that have suffered reputational damage about the water releases by offering compensation for reputational damage. Do you got any idea what they've done to my reputation? These disgusting, despicable, hateful, maniacal, sadistic trolls? If you go on YouTube or anywhere else and search my name, you will find the worst humanity has to offer being said about me. But if you come watch my presentations, and I've produced over 2,600 of these and over 600 radio interviews over the last decade. What you find is that I, I, I just tell the truth and I provide the documentations for all of my assertions to try to counter the brutal harm that was done to me. And when I was on the ocean for four to five months a year for six years, lost at sea, and a lot of times abandoned by humanity, out trying to do the documentation. And I don't know how many times, how many times I had no fuel or no food. I wouldn't come home until I'd done the whole coastline each year because we had to know for sure if this was real. If the, if the species didn't come back, then we knew then it was easy for now to dedicate the rest of my life to the pursuit of reality. And I suffer from that all the time. Non-stop. Reputational damage, reputational damage, reputational damage. What they've done to me um, was good, really, because it means I'll never go away, see? They, they've created me, and I'm going to make sure they regret that. We will fulfill our responsibilities with strong determination not to cause reputational damage, and we will firmly prepare a system, TEPCO president, who be, should be shot and then hung legally because it's illegal to say not to say that apparently for some reason but the world would be saying that in the near future i can assure you by offering compensation for reputational damage i should sue tepco for what they've done to me shouldn't i tepco is fulfilling a promise made right before the water release on the 22nd of august oh they got the date wrong it was actually 24th of august but but the reality of it was it wasn't the 24th of august it had never stopped the, the reactors are actually gone. And they picked up 60 million one-ton bags. So talking about reputational damage, anybody says that you're, you're damaged the reputation of Japan, should the victims should be allowed to kick all their teeth down their fucking throat. So 
self-imposed ban on the Maori sea cucumbers fishing to be lifted because they couldn't find a market for the sea cucumbers. I used to love sea cucumbers. I used to actually die for sea cucumbers commercially. And because you're only, you're only harvesting uh, three days a year, you couldn't possibly hurt the industry, see? And because you're limited to how deep you can dive, if you want to stay down for six hours, like I was doing, generally you don't want to dive more than uh, 33 feet, right? And if you, the minute you go deeper, then you got to shorten your dive time uh, dramatically. According to the association, the ban will be lifted because potential shipping destinations have been found. They found someone gullible or some someone corrupt. They put someone in a corrupt, some corrupt person in a position to make it happen, basically, is what happened. Like, you, you should focus first on geothermal. And the only thing that is kind of holding back geothermal, technology-wise, is the ability to, de to drill deep enough anywhere, because a lot of places you can do it no problem. But the big problem for the most of the, not most, but for uh, a number of places, is the ability to de uh, drill deep enough because the drill bits the problem is when you get down deep it starts getting 600 degrees 700 degrees 800 degrees and the tips become um, unstable but now they come up with new techniques new technologies to overcome that and allows you to drill much deeper much quicker and some of that is they got hydraulic hammers or hydraulic um, well we'll call them hammers but they're kind of like uh, chisels and where it it, split, it starts splitting, breaking the rock up. At the same time, there's 25,000 psi water pressure, which cuts the rocks, right? And then the the hydraulic hammers will beat it apart. And uh, this is how they're able to do much deeper. And then they can go down with the drill and finish the drill, right? And so normally it would take you like six weeks to get down to a temperature where you can produce energy of drilling. But, it, you know, every university is working on the disgusting nuclear industry. And if you flip that, and even if, if you took five universities in Canada, five universities in America, that's not very many, it's a 10 universities, and solved that riddle of being able to drill. If the government took 100 of the subsidies it gives to the nuclear industry and pumped it into geothermal, because geothermal is everywhere. You can drill down 60 feet and reclaim energy and keep the temperature inside your home at 65 degrees all year long. So you, drink, you, you drill several kilometers down, you hit 1,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And so you got incredible energy at your fingertips forever. Right, so you can tap into that um, circulating water over and over and over to drive a generator up above it, and there's no ad and everything is there is recyclable forever. But you can walk away for 170 years basically with just a couple of maintenance people to put grease here and there, right? Uh, and so, if you get better technology for geothermal extraction energy, you can build 20 years, 40 years down the road. You can build a new plant there and just leave the other one running along. Everything is normal. And then when you're ready, you can just turn off one switch and turn on the other. Then you can dismantle the old one, recycle it for the next one. It's brilliant technology. We've been using it for a long time, but it's been shunned because the industry don't want you to think about, you know, um, a community of a thousand people. You can, you can drill down, say, in one garden, the back garden of one place, one house, and you're only drilling pipes like this thick. I'm sorry, say that thick, six inches, I think. And you can put uh, all these pipes in that one place, one garden size, like the, the size of one house property, one acre. And that's the energy for a thousand homes right there. So why wouldn't you do something like that? because the industry doesn't want you to conceive that. But nuclear power industry is pushing for small modular reactors, which don't exist, not even on paper. There's, um, 
like there's one license, New Scale has a license, but it's like typically there's a million pieces of paper. And uh, they have nowhere near that into the regulatory agencies. Now, the regulatory agencies got to take that million pieces of paper when they ever get it, and they got to go through each piece methodically, and they got to find any adverse design flaws. Then New Scale got to re-engineer it, and they got to keep going on. That's going to go on five, six, seven years. Okay, so now they finally got a design that everybody agrees upon. If they can ever get a design actually into the NRC, their designs are based on models we already have existing of large reactors just scaled down. And, they, and they're going to use mixed oxide fuel as, as a trick to get more energy out of, out of the reactors. But the problem with these small modular reactors are they're going to produce uh, 30 times more intermediate level waste, uh, 35 times more intermediate level waste, 30 times more high level waste, and five times more fuel rods when you scale it up to the, the to uh, a typical large reactor, right? And that the fuel that they're talking about, the mix oxide fuel, it's impossible to store that stuff because its emissions have no containments, right? The fuel pools have no containment, and the emissions from the mixed oxide fuel are, are just every atom coming out of there is a hot particle, and there's no way to contain it. And they're, like they're talking about putting a thousand of them across Canada, for instance, one of the stories we've covered on the highway, and then transport trucks can just pull in and charge up at these small modular reactors. Well, first off, you know, when you build these things, you got to run it for 10 years, find all kinds of the flaws that are going to show up, got to re-engineer it and get it through the regulatory agencies again. You know, 30, 40 years down the road, you might come up with a working solution, right? And there's 100 companies or, so, or 70 companies with a design, but none of them are into the regulatory agency. They're just drinking the money that the taxpayers are, are being... Um, weaseled out of is the best way to look at it because it's a total theft every facet of the story and they've, they've tried small modular reactors if they worked they would have done it decades ago right it doesn't work the idea is to stop you from having a future and coming up with other alternative to nuclear disease factory industry a nuclear power plant is a disease factory it's hemorrhaging radiation into an environment 24 hours a day Nuclear power industry is now pushing for the development of small modular reactors as a faster, cheaper way of getting electricity into our homes and businesses. And they're still an experimental concept. And not even a concept. They don't even have a full design in. New scale is the only one. And But what they did is they're, they're detracting from real solutions. right? And so the wind and the solar was designed to drive you insane. And so they put the, they put the wind turbines right in your communities rather than on the mountains where the wind blows all the time. And they put it in the paths of the migratory birds. One thing about this industry is lying is, that's the only, th they told so many lies for 80 years and they can't retract any of them. And the lies get bigger each year and now they have Fukushima is a catastrophic pulse event that destroyed the, the future of all species. We have contaminated the entire planet with this radioactive fallout. Removing radionuclear for 80 years, and Fukushima was the straw that broke the planet's ecosystems back. Removing radionuclides from Fukushima radioactive water. Well, you can't remove the radionuclides. The radioactive water in question, now we covered this, I think, last month or something, or the last couple of months, radioactive water in question was produced by the cooling procedure used to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. No, the water is poured over, melted, and destroyed buildings. And they never, and never show you a picture. They never show you a picture. Notice that? I'll bring you the picture, but they'll never show you this picture. It, or any picture like that will never go into these these cowardly stories that they produce constantly. So what they're claiming is they're pouring water in the building, and I don't know how or where, but I don't see them pouring water into these buildings. I've been looking at this for 12 and a half years. 
They say they're pouring water on melted fuel in, or, and the fuel pools in reactor one and two, that's what they're allegedly claiming today, right? But uh, they said they got the fuel at the pool at this building, the fuel at the pool at reactor four, and both of those buildings were long gone. And where did it go? It, the plume models from France, for instance, uh, the, the main body of the French government, the IRSN itself, no less, models and studies atmospheric uh, emissions concentrations of cesium-137 at a million to 10 million times after Fukushima. Cesium-137 levels increased, increased, per cubic meter of air. Yeah, because you destroyed the buildings. Now, now this model is only based on the 18th, which is um, nine days after the tsunami and two days after the last reactor blew up. This model in your bottom right-hand corner is based on, from the Norwegian Institute of Air Research, is based on 468 hours, which is 19.5 days or so. That's 19.5 days of radioactive emissions right here. So this covers the entire planet in 19.5 days. France has, uh, the mo their model is only based on two days after the last detonation and seven days after the tsunami. And look at the plume model they have generated, right? But France got another model of these emissions. I mean, let's play that one. This is based on 20 days, I think. We'll see in a second. You can see the concentrations accident above. You see the numbers counting off. And so, yeah, this is 20 days or 21 days. So this is 20, 16 days. It's not even that. It's 15 days after the tsunami, 10 days after the last reactor blew up. So this is 10 days after the last reactor detonated. This model down here is 20 days. Th this uh, level's increased a million, 10 million times the cesium-137. And this was, I thought this model was, uh, Z is this xenon or krypton? This is xenon, I think, uh, 133, which burns a hole in the children's lungs, insects, birds, animals' lungs. Now, what they're talking about is tritium remains below detectable levels in the water of Fukushima. And so it's almost schizophrenic when you talk to a, a, the nuclear industry and listen to their version, and they don't provide you any documentations for any of their assertions, right? They, oh, no, the, the tritium level is pretty good at the plant. Yeah, but you have multiple explosions. You threw the fuel rods, the fuel assemblies. You're going to tell me how many tritium got out of the building. See, like, you can argue with yourself about it all you want, but that's generally what you're doing, right? Uh, the nuclear academics all know, when they see that, they know the reactor core is gone, the fuel pools are gone. When they see that, at rea that's reactor three. When they see that at reactor one, they know that the fuel pool and reactor cores, they're gone. They're, and then the evidence, the pictures, the documentations of it. And I harp on reactor three and four because any engineer, like if you if you print this picture out, and I'll give you two pictures. Print that picture out, and there's better pictures up at my website, the nuclearproctologist.org. But if, if if you print out this picture, there's a fuel pool to the right. I'll start that for you. The fuel pool to the right, there's two of them, one up there and one over there, and the reactor core is at the top of the building. So you take a screen capture of this, I just have it without my face there and a screen capture of that one. Bring that to any engineer in your community or all of them in your community and ask them to find a fuel pool in these two buildings, which are 190, these are 190 foot, 65 meter tall buildings. The fuel pools at the very top of the buildings.
And so this is why you might see me, like what you're seeing here tonight is one of the reasons over the years you might see little clips of me having an outburst where I lose my mind. And so when Ralphie L. Grossi replaced the former uh, Secretary General of the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency, who, who I've mocked for, for most of his career, this was his first day on the job, and I superimposed his face. This man will sniff your bicycle seat. And am I wrong? Like, with the stuff that he's done, the lies that he's told, is it a big stretch to think that, that he'd done that too? Because it's not a stretch, is it? And there's so many, you can't keep track of it. Like, I can, but the average person has no hope of keeping track of it. And then there's, see, that was the original International Atomic Energy Agency, not the original, but the one before Ralphie L. Grossi. Right, and then Ralphie L. Grossi took over his seat to lift. And these are evil people. That's, there's no other way to, because the International Atomic Energy Agency are the ones that cooked up the 2.2 grams of tritium is all that, the emissions are from the missing reactor buildings. So ask yourself why these are two nuclear power plants that are both building new reactors, and these sites have had nuclear reactors for many decades, and both of them are surrounded by farms. And the reason you do that is because there's perpetual emissions from every nuclear reactor. <coughs> So I, I launched research expeditions, and I was going to go in the boat today, but I had to bring the boat in, the boat, the, the truck into the mechanics today because we, we got, uh, and we got two more tie rod ends. They're only cheap that will be in next week to finish the job. And I'm just, I ran into the ground, and the, the boat has given us big problems we got the boat running, though. We got the truck running. Thank you, and thank you to everybody. Bless your hearts, for goodness sakes. So we done research expeditions from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska for four to five months at a time without coming home, year after year after year. And I say we, I mean me. And those are the species. They, they were my friends. I'm very familiar with them. I dove in that environment for many years. And the species to your left are exterminated. I went back year after year. And because of perpetual radioactive fallout, not tritium, the species to your left are exterminated. That's not an opinion. And you can pretend those people to your right, those medias, and there's many, many besides them, are in the fuel pools of reactor four, and it's simply not true. So the question you need to ask yourself is, why did they pretend they're in a building that don't exist? Because it's an extinction level event. And we know that because we've done the research year after year. And uh, I paid a horrible price for that. My reputation is completely destroyed. And there's nothing I can do about it. While I was on the ocean, unable to defend myself, I was v viciously, my reputation was destroyed. And it's continuing today, right? The site's actually dedicated to attacking me. I've had my own trolls for over a decade. We we named Calm Down Charlie. And um, I know James had pointed out last night one of the most famous lines from Calm Down Charlie was, we know about your fake uh, expeditions, Dana, or Mr. Dana. And I forgot to put that on a T-shirt, which is... <laughs> Maybe I forgot on purpose, who knows, because uh, it's quite the insult for me to suggest that it wasn't out there when the pictures from these research expeditions are up at my website with the GPSs of where I was. Uh, and I would take an average of 1,000, 2,000 pictures a day and painstakingly post it all up on my website when I came home so that the world couldn't say they didn't know, couldn't say there was no evidence suggesting the damage. And... Um, 
the truth is is unassailable, see? Was it worth sacrificing the millions of species for despicable, disgusting, hateful nuclear industry? Was was it worth stripping the coastline of this beautiful species to your left? Was it worth all your media coming out and pretending they're in a building that don't exist? Was it worth 865,000 extra cancers in the first year? Is nuclear worth any of that? Well, I disagree if you think nuclear is cool. I don't agree with it. I can't condone it. And from what I've seen of it, and everybody in the nuclear industry that I've covered relentlessly for a large part of my life in the pursuit of a future for everybody in all species, with nothing but the best intentions the entire time, and a very difficult job, and I, I have to conquer many, many technologies and technicalities in order to do the things I'm doing. And I've, and, um, I've been unfairly targeted, harassed and stalked, and vilified and demonized and smeared relentlessly daily for my entire time at this, which is very extensive. And what was what to me is the only thing that matters is the truth. And so when I provide you with all that documentation, it's it's meant to do the same thing for you. So you can't you can't say, well, maybe Dana made a mistake. So I provide you with the documentations of my assertions, which is the hardest the most intensive form of journalism conceivable is the constant pursuit of education, right, for everybody, by providing the documentation. They don't provide you any, if you go look at their stories, they got these stories, trading them and everything else, but they got no pictures to back it up. They got no, you know what I mean? They got no, um, no metrics to back it up. I provide you with the documentation. And the only relief we got in all these years was Shinzo Abe got gunned down in the streets. That was a great day. I celebrate it all the time. It was one of the best days I've ever had. Because he made it possible to poison everybody worldwide with scumbag Japanese food. Japanese are disgusting, despicable creatures. They, they should. It was. It's on their watch in their country. They should have dealt with the government and the nuclear industry, and they didn't. You know, each of those dots is a prefecture that grows around a billion pounds of food in nuclear wasteland. And never stopped doing it. It's inconceivable. It's unbelievable that that was allowed to happen and continues to happen today. And so then the poll that we done last night. Did the International Atomic Energy Agency, South Korea, Taiwan, China, and Japan conspire to hide the massive Fukushima radioactive fallout? And everybody got the poll, right? And I'm very grateful that everybody participated in that poll. I guess we'll call it a night. It's Thursday. It's been a tough week, I'll tell you that. We'll see everybody on Sunday. Uh, at the regular time. And uh, thank you everybody for finding the time to hear you. I know the censorship is incredible on me. But they got no one else to pick on. There's nobody else running the education program. And so they really got no one to pick on. And there's a thousand public relations firms trying to just trying to justify their expenditures. 90% of their uh, money goes to administration. And so they need a target, and they got me targeted to the point where I literally don't even exist anymore, but I refuse to go away, and I refuse to give up. And you should too. Have a great day, and a great weekend. Hugs for everybody. I'll see everybody on Sunday. Take care, folks. <laughs>